In Figma, we can apply constraints to artwork within a frame. Now constraints let Figma know how to move and resize these items as the frame they're nested in is resized. So let's take a look at working with constraints. So make sure that layers are showing over here. What we're going to do is we're going to take these icons and make them into a component, but we're going to use constraints. So first of all, let's look and see what a constraint is. If you click on this image right here and look over on the right, you're going to see constraints. Now, basically what this means is this object relative to its parent object, which is actually this frame, the login home, can sit somewhere. We can say left, right, left and right, which is going to basically stretch it out, center it or scale it proportionally, essentially, in that direction, I should say. So we can stick it on the left, stick it on the right, however we want to do this. So if I say left and I say top, if we go back to the home here, if you click on login home and take the frame and resize it or scale it, you're going to see what it's going to do is it's always going to stick there. Now, what's really cool is you can do a lot of things with constraints and with the layout grids as well. All right, I'll press Command Z or Control Z to undo that. So we set an object, how it's going to position, how it's going to move or look based on the parent frame. So let's do that to these objects down here. First of all, I want to draw a rectangle. So go to the rectangle tool and just draw a little rectangle down here. And we're going to make it so we have a little nav bar at the bottom. There we go. Let's change the color, come to fill. You can pick a blue, maybe the blue we used over there or a lighter blue. I'm going to use a little bit lighter blue. Press escape to close that. I want to send it behind these objects. So you can either drag it in the layer stack over there or right click on it and choose send to back. Zoom into it, press shift two so we can zoom in closer. And we're just going to take these icons and we're going to drag them in here. So whoop, make sure I'm going to undo that. Drag the icons in here and we'll snap them in. Don't worry, we'll, we'll scale these and resize them and do different things as well. But get them in location here and position roughly. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And what I want to do is just shift click between them all. We're going to scale them all to make them smaller. So shift drag to make them smaller. That looks pretty good. Click away and just put the one over here on the right and the one over here on the left where we want them to be. That looks pretty good. Shift click on all these and we're going to use alignments to do this. So come up top to the alignments over here and let's do the align vertical centers. It's going to move them all. That's okay. And distribute the horizontal spacing. And we'll drag these up. All right, let's change the colors. So if you come to fill, you'll see that there are mixed colors here for fill. Just click on the plus. It'll allow you to replace it and click to replace it with a different color if you want, a gray, a light, white, whatever you want to do. That looks pretty good. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take these objects and make sure that they all constrain properly so that they move properly, depending on the screen size we're in. So click on the rectangle, come over here to constraints, and I don't want this thing to stay left and top. I want it to actually scale, and it's actually not wide enough. I'm going to make it wide enough. There we go. Now these icons, if we go to put constraints on them, they're actually going to be constrained to the parent element and they're going to constrain to these column guides. It's kind of crazy. So what we can do is we can actually take these icons and constrain them to this object, which currently is a rectangle, but we can only constrain to a frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this stuff and we're going to group them. We can take a group and turn it into a frame. So with this Rectangle selected, shift click to select all these objects. You can drag across two, it doesn't matter. Group them together. You can right click and choose group. Selection, there we go. Now, if you look up here in the upper right, you should see the word group. Click on that and you can convert it to a frame. It's just taking the rectangle object, this guy here. And if you look in the layer stack over here and open it up, you're gonna see we still have all the objects and the rectangle. So it made a copy of it, but it put a frame around it essentially. Okay, with the frame selected, you can tell it's selected over here. Scroll down, and we're going to add a layout grid to this. So click on layout grid, click on grid, come to columns. We're going to say we've got four icons. So change this to four, set the gutter to zero. And what it'll do is it'll just put these lines out here so you can kind of see where they are. We'll make sure it stretches. That's good. Close this up. Now we can go to each one of the icons. And if you come in here and command click on Mac or control click on Windows to select this icon, make sure you actually have the entire icon selected. Right now, command clicking will select part of it. So I'll click on gear icon, come to constraints, and we'll do something like this. We'll say, I want it to constrain to the bottom and also the center, which will be the center of the layout grid column. Same thing here. Let's click on this object right here, the subtract, go to bottom, center, 
we can actually click on a bunch of these. So if you click on this one, shift click on this icon, we can do these together, bottom, center. And come to the rectangle itself. You probably have to go over here to the layer stack, click on rectangle. And we're gonna say this is gonna start at the bottom and we want it to actually be left and right. So we want it to kind of scale left and right. Okay, the last step here is to make sure that the frame is also constrained. So click on the frame, come over here to constraints. We're gonna do the same thing, go to bottom. And this time we're gonna take this one, kind of like the rectangle and say left and right. And that should do it. That's gonna take the frame and the rectangle, make sure they stretch left to right and stick on the bottom and the same with these. So press shift one so we can see everything. Click on the frame, click and drag. And we got it. So press Command-Z on Mac or Control-Z on Windows. If you want to, you can actually take this object and turn it into a component by selecting it and clicking Create Component. That way you can copy this, go to each one of the frames out here and paste it in place. Now, this is gonna get a little tight over here, so we might need to do a little bit of arranging. I'll move this up a little bit, move the buttons up a little bit. Yeah. I might, I might have made the buttons a little bit smaller, but that's okay. So working with constraints is great if you have to put content on different size screens or scale a screen, for instance, or do something like you just saw working with a nav bar. The last thing we're going to look at in this section is called versioning. Figma actually offers version control within each of the files you create. And this is actually a really great way to be able to view a previously saved version, restore a previous version, comment on things, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So in this video, we're gonna talk about version control. To see the version history, make sure nothing is selected and you can see the name of the file up here. Click on the arrow to the right and you'll see show version history. Now on the right, you'll see the version history. What's great about this is that as you make moves or changes or things like that, it's going to auto save it for you. If you look back down here, you're gonna see all the different times that you've done things. And if you click on one of these previous you'll see it's gonna show you what it's gonna look like here. Now, this is just giving us a preview. If we really wanna make this the version, the current version, if you come to the ellipsis here, you can see restore this version. Now let's not do that because we'll lose our changes. But you could name this version if you wanted to, which would mean, let's suppose that we're going along, we're saying, I'm just trying to test something. You can actually make it so that if people are collaborating on this file, which we'll look at later, they can see what the version history is and even say, oh, okay, you were just testing something. So that's why we blew by that version. You can duplicate a version, maybe to try a different uh, idea, okay, moving forward. And we can also go in if we want to, and if you double click on one of these, you can edit the version information. So we can change the title. I can say, we added the footer, for instance, something like that. And you can also, well, that's the description, but whatever you wanna do here. So I'll click save. And that's actually gonna put a version right out here, you can see it right there, plus the, the three autosave versions that were above it and the nine autosave versions that were before it. So it's just a way for us to kinda, if we wanted to collaborate with people and tell them what we're doing and what we're looking at. Okay, make sure you come back to this one, the 1008, and we're gonna say let's restore this version so it goes back to the original. Come back up here and go to show version history and you should see we're back where we should be. I did that just in case. I don't want to lose anything for us here. So you'll actually see that because of the plan, the free plan, we only have a 30-day version history. You do have unlimited version history with paid teams, and you can learn a little bit more about it right there. Now, one thing I do love about the version history in here is that we can, if we want, save a current version. You can force to save it. So click back up here, back to editing. Click on this image right here, and let's suppose I want to make a change. So if you make a change, something like that, you can save that version. So if you come up to the upper left here and click on the menu, come to file, you're gonna see save to version history and there's the shortcut right there. So if you choose that, it's gonna say, let's add a title here. Let's say, moved the image of Brian and then describe what changed, whatever, however you wanna do it, click save. I usually do it in the title, I don't know why. And then if you click away to deselect, come back up here, show version history you can see it right there. So it's actually gonna name it and put it out there. And we also have the auto save and we got the other things that we did here. But this is a great way for us to be able to go and add comments, 
when, later on when we start doing things like collaborating with people, they can see what we've done. We can see their changes, their versions. We can see our versions. And it just makes it so much easier for us to track and see what's going on. Click back to editing. And that wraps up most of what we're going to do here as far as adding content. There's so much more you can explore and learn. But the next thing we're going to start to do is we're going to start to take a look at prototyping.